We're back making summer fruit desserts with Rosie V. Barenbaum, and this time we're on to peaches. Mm. Peach and ginger crisp. Ooh. And this you can use this technique for just about any stone fruit. It's so delicious and so simple. We've peeled the peaches. In this case, with nectarines, you wouldn't have to. And we slice them. And then we just take the light brown sugar. We have light brown sugar and, and a, a little, little salt. Because ah. once it gets mixed in and it sits for a half hour to an hour, the juices start coming out. And you just mix it all in and then let it sit until and it starts exuding the juices. So and it's been sitting go. for an hour. Look at all those juices that came out. And I just want to make the point, what you said, if you don't want to have to peel the peaches, use nectarines. But really, mm -hmm. they should just use whichever of those is It's delicious best and very juicy either way. But see, the beauty of doing it this way is that you get very intense flavor because mm. what we're doing, we're not going to throw those juices and sugar <laughs> out. We're going to concentrate them down. So we just drain it as well as we can. And by doing this, we hardly have to add any thickening. So next step... There's no bottom crust to get soggy, so you really don't have to worry. Next step is to add the wonderful filling ingredients. And to this we have cinnamon. We want the taste of the peach, so we don't want to add too many things to distract from that. But lemon zest Little brings out the flavor. Lemon zest. Ginger and peaches are oh. the most divine combination. And this is a very, very finely, finely grated. grated. And so if you have like a microplane, you could do the lemon yeah. and the ginger. That makes it really easy. And then here's the cornstarch. It's not a lot of cornstarch to use for all those peaches. Look at that. But you don't need it either because the juices are mainly taken out. Yeah. And then we take these juices and we boil them down, either in a microwave or in a pan. Nice and Just thick. until it's so thick, but it doesn't... It's now, may stiff. I add that in? Well, you see, this is very hot, so we want to make sure that there's no cornstarch, no white particles. Oh. Otherwise, it will make it start setting and get thick before it should. Okay, add. I'll drizzle it in then. Just dump. Oh, just dump it in. Yep. Because now I, I protected them <laughs> from the, the juices that remain Protect around the peaches. Protect them until they go in our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they, oops, sorry, they'll no longer need any protection <laughs> there. And after it's mixed in, it doesn't have to be too even because it's all going to bubble together. Now, Day Day, don't you agree that a crumb topping should not be burned and overbaked? Because it's so often. And our... that happens a lot mm. by the time your fruit gets cooked. Yeah, so that's the why I like burned. to first cook the peaches. And in order to keep them from drying out, I cover them with foil and make a hole in it so some steam can escape. Very smart idea. And then when they're partially cooked, that's when we're going to add the crumb topping. So we didn't even have to prep our pan because it's just all nice and juicy. Exactly. And I have one over here. And as you said, this is our peaches that we baked without the topping, and you added foil, mm -hmm. and there's a little vent. Yes, you can see the little vent, steam vent, so it can lose some of its juice. And see, ah. this, this is also quite juicy, though. But you can see from the color, color, it's starting to concentrate, and mm -hmm. oh, it now smells what we're amazing. going to do is put the crumb topping on top. So, we start with the sugars. I like light brown, a combination of light brown and a little granulated for texture. And then these are sliced almonds and these are slivered almonds. Thank you. <laughs> and which do you prefer for this recipe? For this, I like the slivered because it gives more texture. But if I wanted powdered almonds, I would use the sliced because they're already so fine that they are much easier to process without becoming gummy. So I just brought these out to show it, you and everybody. A little cinnamon goes in here too. A little bit of salt. And a little salt. Mm -hmm. We just need our cover. And now we process just until the almonds are coarse. It's going to be to process now a you bit. tell me. I pulse, pulse, it. pulse at this point. Right, pulse a few seconds each time. Great. Okay. Quick and easy. Mm. Now we're adding all-purpose all flour. All-purpose flour. Now, in something like a crisp, I know that sometimes you have strong feelings about unbleached versus bleach. In something like this, would there be a preference? I really wouldn't care here. And the butter, which I soften just slightly. Oh, wait, vanilla? Oh, that's a little bit it. of vanilla. Always gives some flavor. Mm. And now we're going to pulse it in until it's all even. And here is the secret to getting a really crisp, extra crisp. And it comes from you, Day Day, because somebody told me <laughs> that Day Day said that if you add the butter melted, it comes out crispy. And it does. And I always do it that way when I have time. But since now we're a little short for time, I prefer to do it with the solid butter because I'll be able to use it right away. If you Smart. do it with the melted butter, it gets too soft to, to really press into nice little clumps. 
See, so you're right to have stopped it just when you did because it was just starting to come together. Ah, look at that. And now in order to get those nice little balls, you know, like on the top of a crumb But we pie. do, and we do have that texture from the slivered almonds. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Whereas the sliced would have turned Completely into a vanished. powder. You would have had flavor, but you wouldn't have had and texture. And now we just sprinkle on top. Yep. And you see the juicy part will get absorbed by the flour. So the bottom part of the crumble will be like cakey-like and the top mm -hmm. will be crisp. Mm -hmm. But as I said, if you use the melted butter, then you'd put it in the refrigerator to firm it up and then make these little balls. And then you'd have it even more crunchy. Oh, How did you figure that out, by the way? That you know what it was? It was from uh, chocolate chip cookies because I like, uh. Uh, I just, I started melting butter for chocolate chip cookies is the simple answer. And I thought, hmm, what about melting butter for other... That's how we discover things. Exactly. Because it's all going to taste good, so you should be adventurous you can in the kitchen. Play. Uh -huh. And now we put Absolutely. this back in the oven. It's a 400 degree oven because if you were to use a lower oven, it tends to get greasy for some reason. That's something I discovered. Well, I think there's one waiting for us over here. We can show them this beautiful, huh. finished. Oh, oh look, look at what that. you did. See, in order to get that kind of little path, what you have to do it not so clumpy, and then you just take a little knife or a spatula and run it around. It looks like a kind of zen Oh, so zen this is garden, an alternate right? idea. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to spoon some up, I think I have some vanilla ice cream in the freezer. I'll go get what that. more perfect. Then cool vanilla ice cream slowly melting on hot peach ginger crisp. Mm-hmm. More. You see, it's you quite a just, nice layer. We could just put that on there for <laughs> you and me. <laughs> hmm. See, and you see that there's no juices. It's all pur purposely, perfectly thickened, and yet juicy. I think my mouth's watering in anticipation. <laughs> I can hardly talk. All right, we'll use a spoon for this. And I'm going to get a spoon out. I think there should be one right here. Hopefully. Got to oh, get a, spoon. a big spoon, <laughs> a big spoon. But we got to try it, right? Okay. Let's see. <laughs> this is perfectly <laughs> fitting that we should have spoons like this. A little bit of ice cream. You know, strawberries or peaches. Peach. Which, which is which is more summer? I mean, this is the two perfect fruits. And it would be great with plums and apples. I mean, just a pair. Mmm. Oh, little bit of cinnamon. Oh, too much. Not too much. It's just really enhancing it. And the ginger, just really subtle, and the lemon. And mm. you've got that texture contrast with the, the uh, not only the topping to the peaches, but then the coolness of the ice cream. Now, you know, if you use too much cinnamon, much as I love cinnamon, it overwhelms. Thank you. What better way to cap off the summer with strawberry and peach desserts? But stay tuned. We've got some wine pairing tips for these delicious dishes.